This here is a very budget laptop. It's the MSI Bravo 15. This is the 2023 model. It has some 2022 parts in it, but it does have an RTX 4050 in it. It does come with a 7735HS processor for AMD, which is a great processor. This laptop is not meant to be a super halo laptop. It's meant to be an affordable laptop. This one here does not have too many compromises if you consider the price. It's not gonna compete with the highest end laptops from different brands, including even MSI, but it's not supposed to. This laptop costs me 800 Canadian dollars. That's about 550-ish American dollars, maybe 600 at most American dollars. It will jump right into this review real quick. It's gonna be a full rundown from me on this laptop here. And we'll go through the specs as we go along, but realistically, if you're looking for a budget laptop, good, low cost gaming laptop that really doesn't actually compromise, this is actually a good option. You do pay for what you get in most cases on a lot of laptops. In this case, the value proposition is actually quite high because you are paying very little for this laptop, but it does deliver the gaming performance that I think a lot of people are gonna look for without breaking the bank. Okay, so here it is, we'll unbox. Like a lot of MSI laptops, it's uh, very gamery, right? Like that, so it's got the gamery kind of aesthetic on the top there. You know, it's a thicker kind of gamer style laptop. This is kind of more like traditional, what you would get like in, I don't know, 2015, 2016. Um, actually, my first gaming laptop I ever bought was an MSI, MSI Ghost GS60. Anyway, so that's the laptop there. You know, it's not gonna be all metal, super hyper premium, like some of the laptops, but it's not even in that price bracket, right? This is a very cost effective laptop, but you do get a nice, very smooth actually top there. It's definitely plastic, but it has a very nice smooth texture on it. Uh, not exactly thin. It's not super thick or anything though. And then, you know, you get your kind of little bit of a gamer aesthetic there. Uh, this kind of hatch mark thing that they do on some of their stuff. And on the left side here, you're going to get your barrel style power in. Uh, you get an exhaust out. Two USB-A, one of them being a faster style 3.0. That's probably a 2.0 there. So you can use that for like a mouse or something like that. Right side here, you get another fast USB-A, and then you get your USB-C, your primary USB-C on the device is on this side. Uh, it does look like it supports power delivery and powering, so you can go USB-C for that as well. Uh, then you do get HDMI, headphone, and RJ45. So pretty good ports, all things considered. You get three type USB-A, only one USB-C, but again, it's in the more budget offering, and you're probably not getting this as like, you know, a creator style person who's gonna be, you know, using all kinds of USB-C dongles. For comparison's sake, I'm gonna bring in my Lenovo Legion 5 Pro 2023 model. Uh, the, the Legion Pro is a stack up, like in terms of price. So this one here, it's not like, this would be more in line with the Slim from Lenovo. This is the like kind of mid-range, so it's a little bit more premium. It's got more metal on it, but you can see there just basically the size. Um, it's actually the exact same width, like exactly. Uh, Height-wise, you know, they're quite similar. Uh, the MSI seems thicker for some reason, just because of the curves, but it's not thicker. Uh, might actually be basically the same. When you set them side by side like this here, they actually seem to be very similar in size. I think the Lenovo is actually slightly taller maybe. No, yeah, it's a little bit taller at the back and at the front, it's like the tiniest bit lower. So very, very similar. So if you've seen a Lenovo Legion 5 Pro, that's basically what you're looking for in terms of form factor design. It's actually somewhat muted inside, which is nice here. So you do get um, more of a gamer look to it, but you know, you could take this somewhere and it doesn't scream gamer, it just screams you've got this laptop and it has the capability to game. You know, a little bit of accents there, nothing crazy. This one here is the uh, Ryzen 7 model. It's not AMD, it's AMD, which is nice. Hopefully it has some good battery life on it. Uh, trackpad is not big, uh, more of a traditional small trackpad. The, you know, the layout here, you get your uh, little bit of stuff up here. I'm not sure if that's, could be speakers, I'm not sure. Could just be an accent, but there might be speakers there left and right, which would be nice because then you'd get speakers down, speakers up. We'll have a look at that. So we'll come in here and check the weight here. Uh, so 2,307 grams. You can see that there. Uh, that's about, yeah, it's about five pounds. Uh, that's 3,000. So that's um, you know, six point something pounds with the charger. Okay, so I took the screws out there. There's like 400 screws in this. I think there's actually like 11. Uh, that's a short one. There's a weirdly short screw right there. Uh, so just don't mess that one up there. That is a weirdly heavy bottom. There's a huge metal plate there. That's weird. What the heck is the point of that? Is it to balance the laptop? Because the battery's on this side? That might just <laughs> literally be to balance the laptop. There's like a metal plate in there. That is the weirdest thing I've ever seen in a laptop. I have never seen that before. So quite literally, there. this is heavy. This is a heavy thing. If you took that out, the whole laptop would weigh less. That's so strange. I think physically, I think physically this metal here is just to balance the laptop. So you can see here, you know, slightly more fan on this side, right? Slightly more copper fan, and there's more battery on this side here. So 
I guess it's to add some weight to the right side of the laptop. Right? And it's on that like that there to keep it balanced. So like in hand, it does feel balanced, right? It feels perfectly balanced. When you put your hand in the center, right? The laptop feels balanced. Uh, perfect. So I guess that, that would, you could take that out. I mean, if it matters to you, if you don't care if your laptop is heavily balanced right or left, which some people might care a lot about. Yeah, that is a huge chunk of metal that is explicitly designed to physically balance the laptop. Let's go like that there. That is a 153 gram piece of metal in there. 2,152, it was like 23, 2,400 before. So yeah, if your laptop, you want it to be lighter, take that out, I guess, strange. Um, you can see here, it doesn't have a gigantic battery, 53.3 uh, watt hour battery, not huge, but this has an AMD, uh, six, previously 6,000 series, so 75, 35HS, so it's kind of, you know, the Ryzen 5 from 6,000 series, which is actually very good on battery life. So despite the fact that it's, you know, 53 watt hours, I expect good battery life on this, we'll find out. Uh, you do have pretty good upgradability too, so you have your first NVMe slot here, it looks like it comes with a Micron drive, which is crucial. Uh, there's a second NVMe there underneath this cube, which is also weird, because you have to take that cube out. <laughs> it's a weird laptop. Um, yeah, and then you can put another NVMe in there. There's nothing to hook it up to, so. Uh, little wee speakers, same as you're gonna get on like a Legion or you know, whatever, it's fine. They won't have incredible sound, but it should be okay. Uh, so you have two NVMe with that weird thing over there. You do have pretty decent cooling. You have a two fan set up here. This system won't run hot because neither of the chips inside will run hot. And then you do get some RAM upgradability as well here. Uh, you can see that there's actually two, I can't really show it. There's actually two RAM sticks under there, not one. And just to kind of grab my, prove my point here, I actually have an MSI, me, me. Uh, like where's this thing gonna go, right? Like it's just gonna float there. Right? It's a straight style, it's not the style that goes up as much. So yeah, like what do you do with that? And then you put your metal thing in, I guess. Maybe the metal thing just sits on top of it. Is that what goes on here, right? Because there was a cube there. It couldn't sit underneath, it couldn't fit underneath this cube. This cube was too big, right? Like that was on there. That can't fit down. So you do have to take out this rubber cube weird thing. Um, and then you're basically going to have this floating, which is really odd. That's not going to touch that. Maybe if you have your big ass metal plate in there. But, um, at least it has a second NVMe. I mean, budget laptop lineup, a lot of the times you're not necessarily guaranteed to have sodium and dual NVMe. So it's kind of nice that you're actually getting quite a bit of upgradability there. So let's open it up now. Let's see if the actual NVMe works. And uh, we'll give some testing and see how the laptop is. Yeah, let's have a look at the software. I haven't done an MSI laptop in a little while, so we'll see what it comes with. Uh, all Microsoft stuff here. This is all Microsoft stuff. You can get rid of it or keep it if you want. Minecraft, I guess that's Microsoft too. MSI Center is, you're gonna wanna keep that. That one's kind of your like management software. Yeah, so pretty much and Spotify, whatever. You can get rid of the things that you want, but primarily you're gonna get rid of Norton. Uh, you can do some management stuff in here. And then uh, there's some other ones here like user scenario. This is a good one here. So there's different performance modes you can go into here. Right now we're on discrete. So that's gonna be uh, disabling the integrated graphics, which are very capable. But if you disable the integrated graphics, you allow yourself to have more power going to the discrete, which will allow the NVIDIA graphics to perform better. In most cases, I actually just use hybrid because it can switch back and forth, but that's fine. And these are your cooling modes here. So balance this balanced, honestly. Uh, extreme will kind of just make the fans go. Um, it's good if you're doing gaming, I guess, but it can be a little bit noisy. Uh, AI, based on my experience, will kind of tune it a little bit more depending on the game. I found that that was more effective um, or balanced. Obviously silent or, you know, super battery are good if you're just doing generic tasks or whatever. Okay, let's do a quick typing test here. Uh, have a look at the keyboard here. So it's got obviously your RGB here. So it looks kind of nice. I kind of like these see-through WASD. It's kind of nice. And if it's like the MSI keyboards I've tested, then it's going to be good. But let's give it a quick typing test. Yeah, great keyboard, great, great, great keyboard. MSI makes nice keyboards, it's nice and snappy. The texture of the keys is good. The key travel is nice, like really good key travel. You can see that there and it just feels nice and snappy. Um, one of the better keyboards you're gonna find on a gaming laptop, it's quite nice. Like, and if you're using this as like a student or a business professional or just whatever, just casually and you need to type up essays, yeah, it's a really nice keyboard. So um, yeah, quite nice actually. I don't really, I wouldn't change anything 
to be honest. I like the fact that it still has a numpad, but they shrunk it, so it kind of appeases both sides. Uh, the RGB is not offensive. The keycap texture looks good, um, and the travel is good. I like it. The trackpad's pretty small, but it's a nice trackpad. Nonetheless, it's very precise, and the click is nice. All right. So it doesn't feel like a cheapo like trackpad, like an afterthought. It's just they decided to make it smaller. It's a gaming laptop, so you don't need this massive thing. You're also going to put your hands on it. So a big trackpad, a big trackpad might actually be a problem if you're you're resting your hand on the trackpad all the time as a gamer. So the fact that this is leaning towards gamers means it has a decent sized trackpad. Nothing crazy, but they keep it a little bit smaller. But the actual quality of the trackpad is quite nice. So the screen on this is nothing special. It's a 1080p screen. It's not like a super color accurate or anything like that. It is a fairly high refresh rate though, 144 hertz, 1080p. So it's obviously gonna be good for gaming. This just has a 4050, RTX 4050. So you're not necessarily gonna to wanna to have a super high resolution screen as it is, but uh, let's check the colors here. Again, it's not a creator style laptop, so. Yeah, you can see the color space there. It's not fantastic. It's sharp enough and it's bright enough. So if, you know, if we make sure the brightness is all the way up, uh, no issues with brightness, no issues with sharpness, at 1080p at least, but the uh, color space is not huge. It doesn't look bad, but it's definitely crushed a little bit in the red and the orange. Uh, nice blacks there, which is nice. Um, no bleed there at all. I was using this last night as well, at night and with the light off, and it was fine. But uh, definitely not, you know, the most color accurate, huge color space screen, but I've seen worse, to be honest. It's kind of okay. So if you're doing, you know, color correct professional work, it's probably not the screen for you. Uh, reds, blues are all fine in that. It's just primarily the reds, right, where you get those, that crushing of the color space. I usually find it in the reds. And you can see this is a little bit muted here. Uh, just not quite as vibrant as you'd get from a, uh, an OLED or a million LED or an IPS glossy or something that has a huge color space. But it's fine. I mean, it's not bad. It's okay, I guess. Uh, it's okay. It's it's all right. It's a gaming laptop. It has decent enough speakers. There's no rattle, no tinniness. It gets loud enough. Um, you know, there's definitely not a ton of bass, but there's actually a little bit. So I'd say it's fine for a gaming laptop, actually. Uh, I've definitely had much worse on, like, business-style laptops that sound significantly worse. So it's fine, to be honest. Not bad at all. Um, definitely has enough volume in that to get it going, overcome the sound of the speaker. So if you're gaming, you're going to have no problems with it, watching shows, uh, but certainly not going to blow you away. Okay, and here we are. I'm just going to do a little bit of game testing. We don't need to do tons because, I mean, we know what the hardware should be able to do. Resident Evil 4, I'm at 1080p, obviously, and I'm at prioritized graphics, so just turned way up. And just the lightest amount of DLSS here. And as you can see here, we're getting really high frame rates here. Uh, temperatures look okay on the CPU, 87. It can get hotter if it needs to, it's fine. Uh, GPU is pulling in 78 watts. It's a lot of watts for a 4050. Uh, so, you know, it's definitely not a low wattage variant or anything like that. Adding more watts won't do much to a 4050, to be honest. They kind of plateau at a certain point. So uh, that's really good performance. Let's actually turn off the uh, resolution scan because we don't need it, obviously. This is just native 1080p. Yeah, it doesn't make any difference. So native 1080p now, basically similar performance. So people may look at the 4050 and say, well, it's just a 4050. Yeah, I mean, it is just a 4050, but it's got six gigabytes this year on the 40 series, 4000 series going from the uh, 40 tier, from the 50 tier. And uh, yeah, it's, I found that it performs just fine. Games that need huge memory bandwidth might suffer a bit, but I mean, a 4050 is still 4050. It's still gonna be light years ahead of what you're gonna get on you know, some of these handhelds like the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally, like not even comparable. It's in a whole class ahead of that, so. There's definitely something funky going on with the power plans. You can see here that the performance is only 9,000 on the CPU, which is very low for a 6800H or 7735H. And I came in here and uh, yeah, it's something's a little weird with the power plans here. You can see here we're only putting in, you know, we're only at 50 so degrees. The thing has a lot more it could push into it. And uh, the wattage is really low, which is weird, 25 watts. There we go. I did a BIOS update. MSI had a BIOS update, and now we're cooking. 
you can see that there. Now we're up to 12,500 you on that. That's what we should be hearing. And the fans are going a little bit louder and there's some action going on the CPU. So clearly you gotta do a BIOS update when you get it. That's fine, just do that. Let's see. So now we're at about 52, which is fine. Um, yeah, so now that basically fixed it. Just when you get the laptop, do your BIOS update, which you know, often there's laptops need BIOS updates and you'll unlock a lot of performance. Okay, and here's a look at some benchmarks. So Wi-Fi is quite fast on this laptop. This is as fast as my Wi-Fi can actually go. So over 600 downloads, my Wi-Fi just doesn't go any faster. So you probably could get faster if you had even faster Wi-Fi. You can see here the SSD is nice and quick here. Gen 4 speeds, 4,600 reads, 3,300 writes. So respectable Gen 4 speeds on that. The Cinebench score was quite good. Once I did that BIOS update, the score came up quite a bit. We were above 12,000 for that CPU. Very good. And you can see that there's no throttling whatsoever on the CPU for temperatures, so the cooling solution is effective for that CPU. Battery life here, you can see that we're on idle. This is basically 60 hertz idle, just kind of hanging out at 100% brightness. And it's going to give you about six hours or so. And then on YouTube, I did 1080p 60 YouTube, and we're at 94% here. And if you look in the bottom right here at Hardware Info, uh, you can see how much time is left. And in this one, this case here, it gives us approximately four and a half hours of 1080p YouTube. So despite the fact that it has a fairly small battery, you know, middle-sized battery, uh, you're still going to get really good battery life because of how efficient that AMD CPU is. So here's a look at the built-in webcam. It's actually pretty good, realistically. The colors are good. Saturation is good. It's not overblowing my face or anything like that. Uh, so overall, I would say this is actually a pretty good webcam, uh, especially for a gaming laptop. Uh, you know, I usually expect almost nothing for gaming laptops these days, but this is actually pretty good, realistically. What's my takeaway on the MSI Bravo here? This is the 15C7V variant with the 4050 and the 7735HS. It's actually really nice. Uh, I did need a BIOS update. Uh, without the BIOS update, the CPU was underperforming. Once I did that BIOS update, though, it's great. The CPU is performing exactly as you want it to. Uh, and it's actually running very cool, too. There's kind of overkill cooling for this system, to be honest. Uh, it has a lot of cooling in there. The fact that it just has a 4050, it has no real issues keeping that cool. The CPU is, even in like heavy gaming tasks, it ran really well. It was running, you know, under 90 degrees, so it wasn't throttling or anything like that. So it's definitely up to the task. The fans are not offensive. They are not silent, but they're also not offensive either. So build quality on it is nice. I mean, it is an all plastic chassis, right? Like it's not, you know, a metal unibody or anything like that. It doesn't have the best screen in the world, you know, with like huge color space, but it's a gaming laptop. It's a 1080p high refresh rate screen. Uh, with decent enough colors, bright enough, really, so it's going to be perfectly fine for gaming. With the 4050 in here, people may think, oh, it's just a 4050. You can do a lot of gaming on a 4050, especially at 1080p. You're going to be playing any modern game, any AAA game, with good settings, if not maxed, depending on the game. The main thing is this laptop is not expensive. You get upgradable RAM, upgradable storage, the cooling is good, the build quality is fine. Um, you know, this is not a $4,000 laptop, right? This thing cost me 800 Canadian dollars. It's like 500 American, 550 American. That's nothing, right? That's nothing. And for that kind of price, if we look at the price of the laptop, it's quite good. So I would actually recommend this laptop for people who are looking for a budget offering, offering to buy into. I mean, yeah, sure, you can get like a used, more expensive laptop with a 4060 or something. Yeah, maybe, depending on your market. But if you don't have access to such things and you want a nice new laptop, good performance, I mean, what's really to critique about it. It doesn't cost much whatsoever, and there's really no compromises for the price, right? You gotta pay more to get more, realistically. So you could get, even from MSI, you know, if you pay twice as much, you're gonna get more laptop. But at an $800 Canadian buy-in, or five, 500 to 550 American buy-in, I can't think of, I actually legitimately can't think of a better laptop at this price range. 